someone comes to us when we have a problem that's going to look like this. Now, you can obviously do elimination and substitution for any, for any um, solution that you guys have. However, if you guys look at this, no matter what variable I solve for, it's going to take two steps, correct? You have to undo addition and subtraction and undo multiplication and division. Right, Dimitri? Shelley? Ashley? Sadiq? So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which, which variable you choose for. It's going to take two operations to solve for it. All right? So there's really not an advantage. You could use substitution for this, but there's really not an advantage to using substitution over elimination. Because no matter which variable you solve for, it's going to take two, two operations. Undo addition and subtraction, and then you're going to have to undo um, multiplication and division. All right? So what comes up to us, another advantage sometimes, is the elimination technique. And what the elimination technique is going to be very similar with the substitution. Remember, when we did substitution, why did we substitute? Because once we substituted, what happened? We got rid of the other variable, right? Well, the same way, how, what is another way we could eliminate the variable where, we only have, where we're only solving an equation with one variable? So here I have 3x plus 2y equals negative 6, and 2x plus 5y equals 7. So when, they, when you guys look at your or, graphic organizer, what they do is they say, if I can add these two equations up together, where, one have, where they have the same coefficient, but one's positive and one's negative, then I'll have 0. Um, when I add them up together, I'll get a 0x or a 0y, which will eliminate one of the variables. So first of all, let's look at this. If I was to add these two up, do I eliminate a variable? 3x plus 2x is 5x. 2y plus 5y is 7y equals 1. So did I eliminate a variable? No. All right. So what I have to do is I'm going to have to multiply these by multiples. And also, I'm going to have to make one negative and one positive. So in our example, they say, why don't we multiply the top by negative 2 and the bottom by 3? Well, the first thing they do is, let's pick a variable to solve for, right? Yeah, any question? Yeah, let me, I'll show you why, yes. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But let's take a look at 2x um, plus 4 equals 8. What's the answer to this? Two. 2, right? The answer to this is 2, right? If I multiply everything by 2, I get 4x plus 8 equals 16. What's the answer to that? Two. It doesn't matter. As long as you multiply everything by your factor, you're not changing the equation. That's why it's OK for me to multiply by negative 2 or 3. Yes? Is the x the same for both of the things you Yes, when we're looking into graphing them, all right, um, then, you can, then you can find the x and y intercepts. For right now, though, I just want, we're just focusing on solving it by elimination. But you could always verify by using the x and y intercepts or by you know, graphing it. But for right now, to solve the technique, what I want to do is we just need to pick. All right? You need to pick which variable you want to eliminate. And I forgot to ask this, but I'm going to eliminate the x variable, because that's actually in your notes that we're going to work on. However, if you want to eliminate the y variable, you can do that as well. So to eliminate the x variable, I multiply by negative 2 and positive 3. Why am I multiplying by negative 2 and positive 3? Because negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6x. Positive 3 times 2 is a positive 6x. All right? So when I multiply everything up, I'm going to get negative 6x minus 4y equals positive 12. Right? Remember my equation. Make sure you multiply everything by your factor. 3 times 2x is now positive 6x plus 15y equals 7. 21. You've got to multiply by everything, right? Good job. So multiply every single term by your factor that you decide. Now the reason why, again, why did I pick negative 2 and 3? Because by multiplying them by different numbers, when I add these up together, am I going to now eliminate the x? Yes, I will. 
So now I get 0x plus 11y equals 33. So I get 11y equals 33. Divide by 11, y equals 3. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's pretend we wanted to solve for the y. Just a little FYI. I know it's not in the notes. But let's say we wanted to solve for the y. What two numbers would I want to multiply up top and bottom to solve for the y? Yes? OK. Is there another option you could do? So you said negative 2, well, you'd multiply by the bottom by, right? So you could also do negative 2 and 5. Is there another two numbers you could pick? Yep. Is the, is it, does it matter if I say negative 5 and 2? No. Is there another one? That's usually a way. Yep. But you, um, and since the, because why, which numbers, when we're multiplying them, what are we producing? When we multiply them by different factors, what are we producing between the two numbers? Huh? Yeah, the, well, it's the least common multiple, right? So what we're trying to do between our two numbers is we're trying to figure out the least common multiple. So it doesn't matter if I do 5 or 2, or 5 and negative 2, or if I did negative 5 and 2. You could even do numbers that are not the least common factor, but then you're just doing more work because you're going to have to reduce it anyways. So let's do this one. Let's do 15x plus 10y equals negative 30. And then here I'd have negative 4x. Uh, minus 10y equals negative 14. Now, when I add these two equations, do I get rid of my y? Yeah. So I end up with 11x um, equals a negative 44. Positive, no, it's a negative. 11x equals, um, positive 11 equals a negative 4. OK, so last thing I'm going to do, Sam, last thing I swear, last thing I need to do is, yes? So you can do the elimination both ways to Yeah, it doesn't, matter which, which, it doesn't matter which variable you want to eliminate for. All right? Now, I wouldn't do it. When you're solving a problem, though, you're not going to want to do elimination. You're not going to do one, not, one, da, da, da. You're not going to want to do this twice. I'm just showing that you can eliminate either variable. All right, when you eliminate either variable, you're going to multiply by different multipliers. So what's the easiest way to solve for this? So once I know that y equals 3, rather than doing this to solve for x, what can I do, Dimitri? You can just plug in 3 in for y, right? Now which one do you pick? Does it matter? No, just plug it in for either one. So I say, let's do the top one. 3 times x plus 2 times 3 equals negative 6. So I get 3x plus 6 equals negative 6. Minus 6, minus 6. Is that the same answer that I found before? Yeah. And what if I, want, what if I solve for x and I wanted to find y? Could I plug it into each one? Either one. Let's do the next one. Let's do the second one just to make sure. So I do 2 times negative 4 plus 5y equals 7. Negative 8 plus 5y equals 7. Add 8. Is that my answer? Yeah. OK, so I just did this problem twice. <laughs> I did it for the x, or for y first, then solve for x. And then I did it for x, sir, x first and solve for y. So this is a pretty long video. You only need to do it one way. Just pick your guys' variable. If you notice, the first question says, pick your variable you want to you want to eliminate, right? Once you pick your variable you want to eliminate, then you just follow through on the steps. All right? Whew.